I was in a car accident. I had third degree burns on 80% of my body. When I woke up from a coma, I first saw myself. It was a shock. I looked at it and I was like, well, that's, that's my life now. Does it feel different? It's a little bit more firm today. My face and double hand chance and it was the first to be done in the world. People look or stare, but it doesn't really affect me because I don't know who they are. They don't know who I am. Nothing really changed except my face and hands and the scars on my body. I'm still the same guy on the inside. The glass half full person is what Joe is. I love that about him. This is all third degree burn. This is my real skin. You can see like little bumps in it. That's because he took skin grass from it and then put it on for the third degree burns. Before my accident, I was a pretty independent person. I moved down to my parents' house at 18 years old. And I did like the typical 18 year old stuff. I went out, you know, but also worked a lot. Right before the accident, I was working a night shift on overtime and my body just couldn't handle it no more and it just fell asleep at the wheel. I don't remember the crash at all. I only know what happened because of what people told me. My car uh, crashed, it flipped like three times, knocked down a telephone pole. I got third degree burns at eight percent of my body. I was in a coma for about three and a half months. When I woke up from a coma, I first saw myself. It was a uh, shock. I looked at it and I was like, that's my life now. I like, couldn't really do anything, so I just wound up on my parents' couch and that's not the kind of life I want to live. Uh, the transplant definitely uh, affects my movement and speech a little bit. My hands are still tight. My face does get too swollen. Uh, you can't really pronounce my words correctly. My face and double hand transplant was the first to be done in the world. They had to cut off my burnt hands and put on the donor hands that donated his hands and face to me. And now I have normal hands that I can uh, do normal things with. My doctor told me that, you know, you can die with the surgery and that didn't hesitate me at all. I just kept pushing for it. So I had a lot of motivation too, to just get back to living on my own again. And now we're here. These seem a little bit more smooth today. They hurt when I woke up, so like- They did? Yeah, a little bit. I go to therapy about twice a week uh, for an hour. The fluid that's in the forearm, the hand, fingers, it has to go toward the center of the body. Joe and I started working together a few months ago. I believe we started in April. Joe is in physical therapy for swelling in his hands. And so we're working on improving the swelling in his hands by doing exercises, doing manual lymphatic drainage, and with the use of compression. Does it feel different? It's a little bit more firm today, which may be also from the heat. So the end goal is for Joe to be able to manage any swelling that he may have in his hands and uh, to keep it down so that it doesn't get any worse. What I'd like to do is just give you a little piece of foam. I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and then I'll show you how to place it. You can get dressed. The chance I'm really covered in a lot of ways. I can cook, I can drive, I can do mostly everything. Little stuff like opening up a, a jar that's tight, that's pretty hard. So this is gonna be tape side up, okay? So we're gonna use this under some kind of compression. So for right now, if you wanna use it under the splint, that's fine. And I think that's it. I hope that you have a nice weekend. I'll look forward to seeing you Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Bye. Bye. I never posted a, a burnt picture of myself before. I just didn't feel like I wanted to. And then after my transplant, people start to follow me and stuff. So I was like, I might as well just show people what I'm doing, you know, in day-to-day -day life. So what kind of responses do you get online? It's like maybe like 95 positive and then, you know, like those like 5%. Uh, people that always have to, uh, you know, say something negative or just like, you know, try to peck at you, but it doesn't really affect me because they, I, don't, I don't know who they are. They don't know who I am. I just, you know, keep going there in my life, just keep walking forward and people look or stare or, you know, if they ask me what happened, I'll tell them because, you know, I probably would do the same. Uh, so after my story went out, uh, Jessica followed me on Instagram and I DM'd her because we actually had the same dog, uh, Boston Terrier breed. It was like, it kind of just felt like it was meant to be. How's your thumb look? 
we talked for like a lot on Instagram and the skincare her number. And she just drove out to Jersey, which was like an hour drive. We hung out, uh, ate some Italian food, and then just kept coming back. When we first started uh, dating, we were staying at an Airbnb that was not too far from here. So I think we came here three or four times for breakfast. When I saw people staring, the rude stares bothered me, but I started to realize Joe wasn't phased by it. He's very mature with his mindset in avoiding and blocking that kind of uh, reaction from people. So then I started to try to adapt that kind of not being bothered by it attitude too. Is it hot stuff on it? No. Joe always inspires me with his, uh, his ability to keep it going and to be positive. If I have a bad day at work, he's the first person I talk to about it. He just says stuff all the time that's inspiring. And I always tell him, write this down, you know, because his words are very strong to me. So I'm just writing a book at, the, at this time. My book is about, you know, my, my life after the accident uh, and then, you know, after the transplant. I guess my journey is pretty crazy. I learned to be really patient with things and don't take things to heart when it comes to stuff and, you know, you just keep it in your life. I never really get self-conscious. I just, you know, keep going there in my life, just keep walking forward. I feel like my story just motivates people. A lot of people will DM me personally and tell them how I motivate them and stuff like that. And it's kind of weird because I never had that happen in my life before. I feel pretty happy I can help people I don't know. Pretty cool. I'm very proud of Joe. The glass half full person is what Joe is. I think that's admirable and I love that about him. I think I fully came to terms with it. I'm still the same person before and after the accident. Nothing really changed except my face and hands and the scars on my body. I'm still the same guy on the inside. We have two trans kids. Anyone can be whoever they want. I'm just owning it. Our family is seen to be very unconventional. So I had kids and I can't be hot anymore. Like, moms are hot too. People say I look like a thug, but I love thugs. I take that as a compliment. I'm bored of people thinking that I cannot be intimate. I'm a young, single, hot piece of disabled booty. I feel like I'm going to look at myself and be like, who is that? Life is way too short to be hiding. It is my story, it is my truth.